What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is another Lost in the Pond video. Check out Lawrence's links in the description. Absolute legend, isn't he? He's always been signed with us. Even though, if you do check him out, have a word for him. He never replies to us on Twitter, does he? I don't think he's ever spoke to us. I think he may have replied to me a long time ago when I, I messaged him to make sure it was okay. Before he did his video that was reacting mm. to it, I messaged him to make sure it was okay to react to his stuff. But since then, we, we want to hook up with him or something. I guess we are smaller creators and stuff like that. I feel like hook up in America means something different. Probably. I mean, like, for a collab and stuff like that. Um, maybe even a GeoGuess or something like that. But, Lawrence, man, send this clip to Lawrence. You, you, you're airing us. We, I think we've only sent one Twitter message since. But it's not a DM because we can't access his DMs. Anyway, I've just gone on a random a random tangent there. Check out Lawrence's links in the description. But wait to after this video. Today's a Mio etiquette. Which is quite fitting, isn't it? Because we've got a sponsor for today's video. We have got a sponsor. We have got a sponsor. We've got a sponsor from Ritual. Absolutely awesome brand. And... Um, why don't, we tell, why don't we tell them about Ritual? Should we tell them we'll about tell Ritual? We'll tell you about We'll go on then. We'll tell you about Ritual. Okay, so we've got some Ritual vitamins. You mean vitamins? No, I mean vitamins. Vitamins for the UK, vitamins for you absolute legends in the US. Um, Ritual's today's sponsor, and a massive shout out to them to sponsor. They sent them about, I'd say it's been about two weeks we've been using Ritual, isn't it? Yeah, two they weeks. They sent us out the product, they said, here, have a product, have a go with it, and if, if you enjoy it, let you legends know. Obviously, if, if we haven't enjoyed it, we wouldn't let you legends know. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of them. You guys know how much vitamins are important. And I, I guess it's weird because I'd say for me personally, I mean, you give your experience. Before the last two weeks, I've always known, like, you say vitamin D for the sun and stuff like You need your vitamins. Yeah. But I never really focused on it. Yeah, I've always kind of grown up like my, my friends you know they always come to school saying oh, i've had my vitamin today my yep. vitamin today whatever <laughs> we um, mix it between the two <laughs> <laughs> vitamin today and i was always felt like in my head like why why have you taken that like why but then i feel like as you get older like now we're starting to understand why it's important and Definitely. why you need to take them yeah and what it, they do for your the body benefits yeah and stuff like that. yeah um, so smash, uh, massive shout out to Ritual and the, the great thing about Ritual to be honest with you guys the links will be in the description by the way the code is Beasley's20 mm -hmm. um, 20% the great thing about them, for 20... one month's worth of vitamins one month's, that's a great deal to fair because that is a great is, deal you get 20% off and you may as well just give it a go and it's so easy to use it is they, it's literally obviously just... I've got essential for women yep there's different You've ones for men's. for men they do ones for um Prenatal, postnatal, children, fifty plus. There's, There's all sorts out every, there. Every every category there is a vitamin. Definitely, and it's so easy. You can see what's going in as well because of transparent and stuff. So, guys, to get twenty percent off your first month using Ritual, use the code Beasley's twenty. Links in the description. So go and check that out and use the code. Pin comment as well. And also, like we said literally before about us not knowing about it, Ritual just makes life so, so much easier. You don't have to research yourself. They put all the research in, haven't they? Yeah. It's easy, convenient. You can do it every morning. And uh, and we're absolutely loving it, aren't yeah. we? Love and trust them. And hopefully you guys can join them. Join them. Love and trust them as much as us, yeah. <laughs> I guess, is a way. And uh, it honestly is so simple and convenient. So hopefully you enjoy Ritual with us. So, meal etiquette, what do you reckon? I think, is it going to be like... Is meal etiquette like the way like you hold knife and fork? The yeah. way you sit at a dining table? Definitely. Okay. Um, I mean, I have done this video. It was a very long time ago, mm. um, so I genuinely can't remember what was on the list. I think I will See, I, when it pops like, up. I feel like, as a kid... We ne they never used the words meal etiquette. It was always just like table manners. That's what my parents yes, would say. Manners. Table yeah, manners. Yeah, yeah, Definitely. Etiquette like is definitely you, the posh. Yeah, a table. How um, you, you know, how you're supposed to behave. Or your, you know, how you your parents want you to behave. Definitely. Um, I think, yeah, that, that is pretty much it. Um, and there, there are definitely some classics in it. I, I genuinely can't remember. And I will remember when the pop-up are like, oh, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing, yeah, I can't remember. I, I was about to guess, but I can't remember. So you ready for it? I'm ready. Can you think of any? I can't think of any that I know. Oh, I, I know one. I know one. I'm not going to ruin it for you. Yeah, but I can't I've think just of any one. that I know, but I've got like ideas of what it could include. I'll like... give you a hint. It involves a knife and forks and the names of them. And that, that, that's the only one I can think of. Do off the top of my head. Knife and forks? Cutlery. Let's get, in, let's get into it. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Um, but if wait, you enjoy James this kind of content. me his, his sore throat and cold. Yeah, so maybe you see me drinking a, a lot. Bit. That's why. She's in the early stages of it and she's already feeling rough. So she know. I, all, all the abuse I got for, for feeling ill. No, you feeling Give me the bit, sympathy with the <laughs> Smash that button if you enjoy this kind of content. Smash that subscribe button. And let's check out five ways British and American meal etiquette is very different. What we got? If they hear your accent and you are American, their ears might prick up a bit thinking, here comes a payday. Oh, I sent me the tips. 
100%. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to how we eat. Dining etiquette it is so important, especially when you're meeting your American family for the first time. I'm not talking from experience, maybe just a bit. Cultural differences around the dinner table don't just come down to the words we use, like chips versus fries, or the dishes that we serve. So, you know, America's pecan pie versus Britain's spotted dick. And that is an actual <laughs> dessert. Okay, look it Have up. Have you ever had spotted dick? No. But is it, I've never had it. I, I don't even know what it is. Do you know what it is? I mean, I don't want to guess, to be honest, but... No, it's a general, like, shepherd's pie dessert. I, 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 I would shepherd's used to know what it is. A... No, I meant kind of like... Yeah, shepherd's pie was the worst example. But I meant it's just, it sounds a bit weird, but it is actually a food. That's what I kind of meant. Like black pudding. No. Something like that. No, never. never yeah. Had it. It's definitely a common thing. I've just completely forgot what it is. No, I've just not on your work computer. It. Maybe. It's also about some of the mechanisms that we you use to get, get it into our <laughs> mouths. I'm still talking about food. And also some of the customs and politeness norms that comes with the process of eating. And so without further crab rangoon, here are five ways that British and American eating etiquette is very, very different. Whether you call it cutlery, like we do in Britain, or silverware or flatware, silverware. or in this case plasticware, yeah, because, cutlery, you know, we are... Be noticed cutlery. Yeah, but silverware... So my parents I had... I going to say. My parents had cutlery, you know, forks that were in the drawer. They had silverware that was put away for special that was occasions. That silverware, wasn't it? And they do call it silver. Like, my mum would be like, can we get the silverware out for Christmas? That was like, just Christmas time. It is so called that, silverware. Definitely. It's just... Posh but it's very rare. Whereas I'm guessing the US is just always silverware, mm. not, not call, cutlery at all. Do you call posh <laughs> Imagine silverware fakels. cutlery? Imagine. Just, just complete opposite way around. Because we call it silverware if it's posh. Like, if it's, like, comes out... A special set. Special events, that's called silverware. Like, that is... Definitely. We wouldn't even have to wash that up. That's okay. We can all agree that without <laughs> them, meal times would be very, very messy, especially in America where they put sauce on everything. But the real question is, how do we hold them? And this was part of my existential crisis after I moved to the United States because I grew up learning the European style, or as it might be known here, the continental style. Uh -huh. And when I say that, I'm referring to what is the official utensil etiquette, right? Yeah. As opposed to the official American etiquette. And I'm going to show you, I think anyway, some think of the differences. I personally Maybe. don't have either etiquette completely down because in my wife's words, I still eat like a toddler. But it mostly comes down to how we hold the fork. In Britain, you sort of, you hold it kind of like yep. that, I yeah, think. Yeah, not so So you've got, it, the, the end of it's touching your palm, and then you sort of grasp no. it with your thumb and your pointy Don't finger. You know what? This is actually weird. Because today, I thought my fork were too small because it was touching them. It was proper digging in. And I, I kept looking at my fork. I don't like, hold it like that, though. But that's a, that was genuine today. I don't hold it like well, that. you don't hold it like that. You, you no, I put do. It in it's just, then... I'm not so tight. I'm a bit more relaxed on the grip. Oh, yeah, but it's basically, yeah, how you hold it, you're just a bit, a bit more feminine with it. Yeah, it's just that looks like stabby. <laughs> Jab. But I, I genuinely did have the issue with it hurting my hand today. How weird is that? I know he's saying that. Mm. Small world. I, oh, weird timing, I guess. <laughs> there for pointing downward, right? And you stick it into the potatoes or the strawberries or the spotted dick. Strawberries. And notice it's in my left hand. That's going to be important in a yep. moment. And in the other hand, you have your knife, right? Usually like this with the pointy finger right there. Yep. And it's touching your palm again. So consistent on both hands, right? It's almost an extension of you. You're, you're almost Wolverine, I but agree, from the United Kingdom or Europe. I think and then you do normally. this. Right? Usually at a lower level, you just you wouldn't be able to see it because my arms are off screen now, so I'll put them back there. And then you cut into the potatoes or the strawberries or the creamy spotted dick. It, I mean, it, it can come with custard. That's that's normal. And voila, and put it in your mouth. There's nothing on this. It's not this isn't that scene in Hook where they eat invisible food. It goes this way round, right? With the tines facing downward toward your tongue. In America, it's quite a bit different, right? So people will hold their fork. Like this, with the tines facing if upward. I do, in other words, you to kind do of that if I'm eating like beans or something. Yeah, we do that with beans. But do you guys do or that if you're all the time? Scraping the last bit of peas or vegetables on your fork. Yeah, because how do they, how do they cut the food? How do, how do you cut your food if you can I hold your fork? I think they go like up? that. I think they hold it backwards, and then I've seen someone what? on YouTube do that. So you know they're holding it like that. Yeah. But then they go like that. You, you can't be seen on the screen, but I get what you mean. Yeah. Which, by the way, when I say what, that's Good. not because it's wrong or weird. It's just it's different to us. Mm. We're not used to it. <laughs> like, it's like, what? 
scoop up the food, right? So they'll do that. And, and actually, sometimes, not every time, I mean, I'm sure there are people that circumvent all of the things you hear in this very list, but sometimes Americans won't even use a knife, right? You'll just see them scoop something up, maybe a potato. We won't go through the entire list again. Put it in their mouth. If they want to cut up things in that way, sometimes they'll do it with the fork, right? Don't recommend oh, it with do plastic sometimes. forks. You know, you can get through these pretty quickly if you do that. But if they do use a knife, they may turn the fork like this into the potato and then cut like that. Okay. You've got it there. You turn it back around. It's in your gob. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. You've got potatoes. And, you know, that's what a lot of Americans do. My father-in-law, though, did this. He had it like that and like that. That's what you turn it that does. way, that way, <laughs> and then like that. It was, it sort of looked, I should, I should tell you that my in-laws were cavemen, but it was through those very cavemen slash dear relatives of my wife that I was first introduced to our next entry. Yes, saying grace, this one so, is... I, I mean, some f families do, but I guess... So, at uh, my school, obviously it's Catholic, we say grace before snack and lunch. Yeah, but I think it's just mainly because the US is more religious. religious but it's just but more... I imagine every most religious families like in the uk in do the it UK do no it. definitely i just think there's just obviously more religion mm. in the us so more people do it mm. if that makes sense it is quite a tough entry in many ways because you know in order to talk about it i do have to somewhat generalize and also i don't have much data to back up what i'm about to say it's, it's more observationally driven right um so when i lived in england for 27 years of my life i don't say that with disdain it was a good time um, but in all that time i don't really remember uh, sitting down to a dinner function of any kind and really sort of saying grace beforehand. In other words, kicking off the meal with a sort of faith-based thanks. Now, part of that, and again, this is where the generalization comes in, so bear with me, but in England, we, we tend to be less sort of like publicly open or just sort of even privately open, if you can be, among your family members about your religious beliefs. Whereas I guess so. in the United States, mm. I think people are more sort of proud of that, whatever their religious faith is. And so sometimes in some families, and this again could be regional, so I might well be generalizing, but some families, including the extended relatives that I married into, not I didn't marry them, I married into the, the family. Some families, and I gather maybe quite a lot of families here here in the United States, particularly at special events like Thanksgiving or maybe even a homecoming of some kind, will sort of say grace before uh, the meal. And there'll usually be one family member who stands up and says it on behalf of the entire group. And then you say amen and go about your way. For me, this was, it was quite weird at first, I think. Now I'm very respectful of other people's religious beliefs. I just, I didn't really know what to do except just sort of sit there and then wait for it to be done. And then be like I had half a mind on the turkey. <laughs> so what are you going to do? And because I'm generalizing here, it's important for me to say that this is my experience. I'd be very interested to hear other people's experiences, other Europeans' experiences of coming here and maybe having the same the race when Did they're not used to it. Um, or, you know, Americans that don't themselves practice this. I've also heard it can go one step further here where the whole family holds hands. You know, I definitely draw the line at that, especially right now. The best way that I can put this for British people watching back home is, you know, in football, when you know somebody dies and they have a minute silence within the stadium and then when the minute silence is up they all erupt in applause and all of that it's kind of like that minus the applause you know it's just an amen but the <laughs> energy say, after that amen it's like ah pick it up turkey pulling it in and what have i clicked i i, I I'm... you've got rid of the video. oh <laughs> i've got there we go. I moved the mouse over so it won't pick it up. I accidentally clicked, looked over like how long was that? I think that was just like that at the end, wasn't it? If you guys have missed some of the video, I do apologise. I'll try and put that back on. Um, but just imagine like just like, yeah, turkey getting pulled, chicken's leg. That'd be yeah. pretty fun. Do you think? I'm a Catholic girl, I don't have a comment. No. <laughs> I can't comment on anything other than saying grace. Yeah, no, I was just saying if you like proper applauded that after, you know? Yeah, I'm not sure that'll be appreciative of my school. <laughs> Into your food. And because the energy's so good, that leads us on to our next entry. Oh, I don't mind a bit of chatter and exceptionally weird noises. And at an American dinner table, you're going to get a lot of chatter. Usually, again, this is another generalisation, but on the whole, this is my experience. And I'm one of those people who doesn't think that Americans are always loud, as the stereotype dictates. But one exception tends to be 
in restaurants, right? I do hear the volume go up there as compared to Britain, where it's, it feels like we're always battling with this war within ourselves to not air our dirty laundry in public. I'm not saying we don't talk at dinner tables, don't get me wrong, it just, it feels observationally once again, and again, there's no data on this, there's not somebody going around measuring the decibels in every restaurant in either country, especially right now, because they're all closed. But that's my general experience of it. Now, I could be getting thrown off course a little bit here, because, you know, my, my, my wife's family are really loud. Don't, <laughs> don't tell them I said that, although this is a public video. They know it's true, I've told them before, and that's why we've not spoken in a year. But here in America, you might be in a restaurant, sitting down with just one other person, trying to have a quiet, intimate conversation. And to your right, there's this really loud family with a five-year-old running around with a stupid hat on that he got from the restaurant, right? So they're yeah, further that. enhancing the, the volume of said family. And then on the other side, there's, a, there's clearly what is a date happening. And the woman is just sitting there quietly, looking quite glum, while the man very audibly and haphazardly talks about all of the Fortune 500 companies he's worked for. And she stares into space, presumably thinking of all the ways that she can get out of there. But on the other hand, once you do get used to that sort of raised volume it does add to the atmosphere you know and if you're already in a good mood and you enter somewhere where you know, thousands oh that's a huge restaurant hundreds maybe where there's lots of people and they're in a good mood and it just sort of bounces off the walls you know but speaking of restaurants that brings us on to our next entry i mean i feel like there's a murmur in probably uk ones isn't there yeah i definitely would um i'd say there's a murmur um but I, i'm one of them people i don't know about you but i i don't know Outside noise for I just block out. Automatically, it just gets blocked out. Yeah. Like at work sometimes, there'll be some people who are louder and talk for longer on my phone, and everyone else will hear it or whatever. They're like, oh, didn't realise on my phone, because you know, I'm just in the zone. Yeah, no, I pick up background noise. Do you noise. pick up, and it just annoys you, does it? It annoys me. People eating annoys me as well. Oh, yeah, you hate when I eat. I hate <laughs> it. I actually hate it. I eat normally, by the way. I, I do eat normally, hate but... <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's just blocked out and I'm just in my own head or talking to a person. Giving yeah. the person I'm talking to full attention. I give you full attention. That's what I do. And obviously, I, I don't get your full attention. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Servers, servers, servers. My heart does go out to all of the servers and anybody else to whom this applies around the world who can't go into work right now. And a huge thank you to delivery servers who are able to keep people fed who might uh, need it. But, you know, back in peacetime when the restaurants were still open, um, there was quite a marked difference between, you know, British servers and American servers and, and, and the way they sort of conduct themselves at, at the dinner table while you're eating your dinner. In Britain, they're quite standard. And, offish. and I, I know that's just a trait of British people in general, I get that, but they, they don't have the incentive, which we'll talk about in a minute, to constantly be coming back to your table and seeing how you're doing, checking if you need a refill on that water, because you probably won't get one anyway. I'm joking, <laughs> yeah, of course, refills, you'll get a free it. refill on your water, just nothing else. Often, yeah, know this, if you want their attention, you're going to have to get their attention yourself, and that includes yeah. when it comes time to pay the bill. Whereas in the United States... How many times are we awkwardly just sat there looking around? Yeah, and they just walk past. <laughs> Trying to make eye contact, irritating. like... And then you catch eye contact, it's like, hi, <laughs> and yeah. they come over. Whereas when we were at TGI's, which is kind of like oh, American-themed, it was like, there, boom, 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 fast with us every second, weren't there? Mm. I don't know which one I prefer to be fair. I mean, I, I prefer know. a bit of both, but TGI's was too rushed. Oh, it was that was too, definitely... too, like, we want you out of here. Like, it's not up. always that fast. That was a one-off, weren't it? When you think you've got to wait, sometimes you've got to wait ages just to get served. I just... I mean, you just want somewhere in the middle, don't you? Mm. Where that line is, it's different for everyone, but it's interesting to see. <coughs> And each restaurant has its different policy on this. You know, the waiting staff will come to your table every five minutes, usually, just to see how you're doing. And, and it seemingly doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a seriously one-sided conversation about the Fortune 500 yeah, every companies five you've worked for. They will still come over and go, hey, what's up? How's that tenderloin working out for you? And there are a couple of big reasons, I think, that American serving staff do this. Uh, firstly, the company often dictates it. It's seen as a kind of data-driven way of, you know, having good customer service. But having good customer service could well dictate this more tips yeah have they tried antifreeze with that no well he might go back to his milk phase eventually yeah 
Yeah. So the dreaded tip, or at least it was dreaded to me when I first moved to America, actually, when I landed at Philadelphia Airport, this is the first time I remember having to sort of navigate the American tipping system uh, because I bought a drink at a bar at that very airport. And having bought the Jack Daniels or six, I, I'm not a good flyer at this. I turned to the gentleman next to me and I asked him, how does tipping work? And, you know, he very, very kindly offered, ah, well, whatever you, the amount is on your receipt, just give them 85% of that. And that, <laughs> that's about good. That's standard. That, that was a lie. And I ended up almost bankrupt. <laughs> Firstly, in the United States, regardless of the amount, it's very much expected that you do tip because that's basically how servers make their wage. And the standard amount that you're expected to tip is the complete opposite of 85%. It's 15%, right? Um, but if you if you thought it was good service or just to be sort of a good person, really, um, you, can, you can definitely tip more than that. I typically tip, just try saying that after six whiskeys. I did that night. I typically tip, particularly if I'm on a trip, 20% or, you know, I might even round up to 21 if it kind of requires it. <laughs> Tipping of some kind is expected here. In the UK, if you're thinking of going there, firstly, don't do that right now. But, you know, if after all this blows over, you are fancying going to the UK, then you, you're not required to tip at all. Take right? after. I mean, you people... But most people do. We tip everywhere. Yeah, mainly we do 10%. We don't really do 15% often. No, do we? because mainly, like, in the places we've been, like the place we went to last weekend... It comes under on your bill already as ten percent, so we just pay it. Yeah, I mean, in theory, you can ask to take it off, which we don't, unless it's been. I mean, I imagine unless it's been awful, awful. service, then then obviously like you. You would, but, but I imagine you can do that in the US as well. I imagine if you could. You, can, yeah. you could say, well, actually, no, I didn't. Don't think I received. Good just service. probably less common, but it's. Yeah. I'm, we're just but too then awkward. you think <laughs> in the US they're trying to make their money from tips, so they're trying to be good. Definitely. Yeah, so, so more likely to be better. Mm. People get paid a sort of living wage, more or less, for being a server in the UK. It's good practice. You know, if you want to do that, you certainly can. 10% um, is recommended. And, you know, growing up in the UK, I never really did tip all that often, I must say. I think if I were to live there now, I probably would do so a bit more. It's not expected. I mean, servers aren't going to expect you to tip. Although, if they hear your tip. accent and you are... Yeah, I've never tipped a bar. Like, when no, you've had a drink, just, never no, done that. But nobody That's, does. That's just... I didn't even know that was a thing until we started no, doing these it, videos. Nobody does that. No, in but the UK. We're, we were talking just meals. But weren't then, we? like hairdressers, I'll tip. Lunch, you don't really tip. Lunch, you don't. Tip. Hairdressers only tip. really meals. Meals and hairdressers, I tip. <laughs> Nail my hair that does my nails, I'll tip her. Yeah. Person why do we do that? Um, person that does my hair, I'll tip her. So why do we do that and not a bar? It's person weird, does my isn't it? Eyelashes to her. I don't know. Beauty salons, we do. Yeah. Restaurants, weird. we do. Bars, I don't know why we don't, but I guess in Jersey anyway, it's too expensive. Yeah, we don't at lunch We're either. really paying like £100 for a drink. And... <laughs> it's not that much, but yeah, it feels that way sometimes. Or lunch, American. we don't, no. They're either... No, we don't do lunch either, or breakfast. But if you went to a rush... I don't know. No. I don't know. It's weird. If you're, if you're British, or if you just know why British don't, let us in the comments, because that's just the way we've been brought we up, isn't it? I don't know. This might prick up a bit, thinking, here comes a payday, right? Whereas it's the other way round here. As soon as servers hear a British accent, they must be filled with dread. Or maybe that's not true. Maybe servers hear a British accent and think, hmm, he's ripe for manipulation. You know, I've had some bad experiences. Uh, that's it for this episode. Thank you for joining. If you guys enjoyed the video, go and check Lawrence out. His links will be in the description below. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, it was good. Quite a few different yep. things in there. Um, we guessed a couple of them before, which is obviously mm -hmm. the way you hold it, and then the cutlery and the silverware. Um, let us know the questions we asked before. Uh, and that's pretty much everything, isn't it? Check out our sponsor. Check out um, Ritual, 20% off. Beasley's 20, the code will be on screen again now. In the description, top of the comments. Check it out. Um, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, and watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.